Welcome to IDF TV. My name is Frank Impius and I'm from the Oracle JDeveloper and ADF product management team. In the last recording, I did introduce the ADF error handling architecture and I went through all the layers, just provide you with a little bit of hinting on what the different layers can do in terms of error handling and exception handling. In the second recording, I'm now diving a bit deeper into what the binding layer offers in terms of a facility to handle errors and exceptions. Well, the good news is there is a class, a single point of error handling in the binding layer. And this by default is implemented by the framework. And I will tell you in this session how you can customize it. But first, let's have a look what the default implementation is doing. The default implementation catches all of the errors that come from the business service through access to the service through the binding layer. So this is why it's important that you always work through the ADF binding layer and never work around it. The error handler then formats and displays the error so that the user can see what's going on there. And remember last time I talked about bundling of exceptions, what we automatically do in the ADF framework, so that instead of you waiting for 100 error messages to come up for uh, field validation errors, you just get one error and that will have the bundled child exceptions for you to pass and read. Now this parent exception, this overall top level exception handler, which is kind of meaningless, is automatically stripped out by the default error handler. And you will see how you can change it if you don't like that the way it is. Now to customize the error handler, you would write a custom implementation of the DC error handler implementation file and you configure this in the data binding CPX file which I will introduce later on the next slide where I have a visual for that. But if you look at the method that are provided in this class and that you can use to customize the behavior, there are display methods that allow you to change the display behavior. You can even return uh, a display of null so that a specific error message just gets suppressed though it's still processed but it's not displayed to the user. You can change the formatting of the display message and most of important, there is a skip message. And I have an example where you want to use that where you can introspect the exceptions that are thrown by an application. You just go iterating over the child exceptions and if there is an exception you don't want to surface to the user because it's too technical or too confusing or none of his business, you can suppress that exception just at least use the opportunity to lock it. The data binding CPX file is contained and available in all of the view layer projects, including sub projects. They all have a data binding CPX file and the responsibility of this data binding CPX file is to act as a mapping of an incoming request for a view and to find the associated binding container, the page def file. So this is basically what the data binding uh, CPX file has in it. In addition, it has a name for the data control being used in the context of the view controller project so that when you look at the page dev files, there's no direct relation between the page dev file and the data control, but an indirect relation going through the data binding CPX file. So that if you need to change the data control for whatever reason, you're just changing the data binding CPX files and all the relative addressing will stay the same. However, the Error handler only makes sense to be placed in the top level, some say the super project, the super view project, which is the assembly of the view layer for the application to deploy. Now here the data binding CBX file needs to get your custom error handler configured if you want to change the default error handling as we have it in ADF. The other data binding CBX files don't really matter because they are all merged into this one data binding CPX file at runtime. So just the top level application folder, the view folder, that is the one where you want to configure the data binding CPX file. In this example, it shows you how you select the data binding CPX file, it goes to the structure window, and then you go to the property inspector, and here you find a property to put the full package name and class name of your custom error handler in it. You see the code snippets in the middle, so this is an example of how to do it and how you would write your custom exception handler. I have a more sophisticated example here and you can see the use of the skip method in this sample. So what it basically is doing here is that it says, well, whenever there is a SQL exception, 
I don't want to show the forum key constraint exception to the user. I want to tell the user, well, there's something wrong. Maybe the email address that you just provided is already taken by somebody else. So this is an exception that people don't necessarily need to see all of the um, technical details coming from the database, like what is the name of the foreign key constraint. They don't need to have that. Here's a visual example of what that would do at runtime. On the left hand side you see without the skip. So basically all of the exceptions will be displayed to the user. But on the right hand side you see that the display of the error is changed. So you don't have the duplicate information about the technical database constraint violation a lot more user-friendly and if you think about security and we talked about this one of the security pattern was to give people only the information that they are authorized to have like customer support that was my use case customer support needs to know more about an exception than the user needs and that is one way to implement this just have security using ADF security in your custom error handler and filter out which of the exceptions are good to display and present to the currently authenticated user. Okay, so that's a challenge for you now. So we have a code snippet, typical behavior where in a managed bean you call out to an operation binding, the operation binding now executes code on the business service and bang, there is an error with it now. What would happen? Well, in fact, what will happen is that the exception the error that is caused here will be intercepted by the error handler and the reason for that is because you worked through the binding layer and you didn't work around the binding layer. Unfortunately, uh, presence on OTN forum shows that uh, some customers try to bypass the binding layer because they know the business service just too well. They know that if they go to the binding context which is the runtime representation of the binding CP, data binding cpx file and if they call find data control and get application module they get exactly to the application module so they cast to the application module and call the public method on it well it's all fine because it's all public interface method they call but they work around the binding layer the binding layer the page dev file is not involved and because the binding layer is not involved the error handler is not involved now that means that if there is an error you see a different dialogue and this dialogue typically comes from the container which in the worst case takes you out of your business context. So the user will work in your application eventually there's a big bang and the user finds himself or herself locked out of the application because the error handler is not there to, her to handle it consistently and not to handle it uh, in a way that you can gracefully recover. So always make sure that when you work with ADF the framework is your friend use it. Use your friend, work through the binding layer and you will be able to intercept all of the errors that occur in the business service through this central point of error handling.